we're going to take a look at how we can build a full site editing WordPress block theme from scratch. This is a great way to take control over your site structure, design, and functionality using blocks. We'll be looking at a high level guide in order to get you started. Ultimately, this is probably not the way I would typically build out a theme, but I would like to introduce you to theme development using this method as it will hopefully enable you to understand some of the core files and what their uses are. That way, when we get into a little bit of an easier way to do theme development, you'll have a good base knowledge of how these files work. You'll need to make a theme folder, and I'll walk you through this step by step, but a block theme must contain the following files. It needs to contain a style.css file, a functions.php file, a theme.json file, and it needs to have a templates folder that contains at minimum an index.html. Typically, you'll also have a parts folder that may contain header and footer.html. This is a diagram of a little bit more of a robust structure, and I've gone ahead and added comments about the various files. The first set of files are the ones that I just mentioned, and you may also have a templates folder that may contain several HTML files, a patterns folder, which may contain reusable block patterns, and assets that may contain images, CSS, and JavaScript files. We'll go ahead and we'll begin building from scratch. I've just done a clean install of WordPress. I only have the default Hello World post, the default two pages that come with WordPress, and in my media folder, I have three images that I've imported. One of these images is an SVG, this one right here. So I've also installed the SVG support plugin so that I am able to bring SVG images into my document. To begin with, I'm going to go to settings and I'll go to general. Because I set up my site in local with a title of custom theme, I'm gonna change this to Mar, and then I'll go ahead and add a tagline. I'm going to choose a site icon from one of the images that I've already uploaded, and I'm going to use this icon right here. And I'll save these changes right here. Then I'm going to go to permalinks and just verify that my permalinks are using post name. And that is all I'm going to do. At this point, WordPress is set up. Once again, I do want to let you know that we won't be building an entire website. We'll just begin to create a custom theme so that we can talk about some of the necessary files and hopefully you'll understand the code that is behind them. You're gonna to wanna to open the folder that contains your custom theme. You'll wanna go into app, public, WP content, themes, and this is going to contain the folders of the current themes. Currently, I have two themes that are installed in my WordPress project. So now that I'm in the themes folder, I'll go ahead and make a new folder, and then you can give this whatever name you want. So I'll go ahead and I'll call this Mar Custom Theme. Typically, when you name your folder for the theme, it should not have any spaces. It's okay to put dashes or underscores, or in my case, I'm using camel casing. Now that I have this folder here, I'm going to go ahead and open this inside my code editor. Now that I have the folder open, I'll go ahead and create a new file. I'm gonna call this style.css. And what we'll need to do here is create a basic style file that WordPress uses in order to create a theme. You'll begin by making a CSS based comment, and then you're going to go ahead and provide a theme name. I'm gonna call this Mar Custom Theme. It's typical that you would also add author information, version information, and a brief description that talks about what the theme is. I'll save this file. And if we go back to WordPress and go into our appearance themes area, you will see that our theme is not showing up yet. But if you 
look down here, it's going to let us know that we have a broken theme. So the following themes are installed, but incomplete. It's identifying our theme, but it's letting me know that I need to include this index.html file or an index.php file, and these should be located in the templates folder. Let's go back into our editor. I'm going to make a templates folder, and inside that folder, I'll create a new file called index.html. And that's all I need. Now at this point, because of the code editor I'm using, it added some default HTML. I'm going to delete this and simply save the page. We don't actually need anything in this file initially. If we now go back to the browser and we refresh, you're going to see that our custom theme is listed as one of the themes and I can activate this theme. Currently, I'm using the 2025 theme, and this is what my site currently looks like. Obviously, I don't have very much content, but I just wanted to show you what it does look like. If we go back and activate our theme, go back to the front end and refresh, our site is going to look like this. So you can see it says that the index file is blank because the template is empty, and we need to customize it using the site editor, or we could code it from scratch. We're going to go ahead and work on this next, but I did want to show you that at this point we have created our own custom theme. Obviously it is not doing much yet. So what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to make some modifications and I'll be walking you through that in the next upcoming lectures.